You're listening to When Christians Speak Online Talk Radio, broadcasting out of the Washington, D.C. metropolitan area. Today's voice crying out in the wilderness, prepare ye the way of the Lord. When Christians Speak is dedicated to lifting up the name of Christ Jesus and spreading the good news. When Christian Speak Talk Radio is a non-profit ministry, we are dedicated to spreading the gospel of Jesus through our programs and special guests. We exist through the generous support of our listeners. If you are being blessed through this ministry and would like to give a love offering, go to our website and click on our donation page. Your donation will be processed through PayPal. Our prayer is that you may prosper, be in good health, even as your soul prospers. Unto the Lord, for he is good. Yes, he is good. As a 501c3 nonprofit ministry, all of your gifts are tax deductible. So go out to our website, www.whenchristianspeak.com. God bless you. Listen to When Christians Speak Online Talk Radio on Blog Talk Radio, iHeartRadio, Speaker.com. All of our broadcasts are available as podcasts through SoundCloud, YouTube, iTunes, Blueberry.com, Zoom.com, Stitcher.com, Lisbon.com, and BlogTalkRadio.com. To listen to our broadcast by phone, dial 646-478-0660. Again, that number is 646-478-0660. Go visit and like our Facebook page, When Christians Speak Talk Radio. Also be sure to check out Christians Against Suicide and Depression. It's a page dedicated to sharing God's love, encouragement, and hope. There are prayer awards standing by to receive prayer requests doing intercession for those under attack by the lie and deception of the devil. We know that the devil came to steal, kill, and destroy. But praise God, Jesus came to set the captives free. Praise the Lord, and welcome to another hour of Declaring the Finished Work. This is your host, Reverend Pat Randall. Amen on this glorious Thursday afternoon. Um, Well, I'm going to get, I'm going to pray first, and then we're going to jump into the message for today. Father, we praise you and we glorify your name. We thank you that this is the day that you have made. It is a day that is unlike any other day that we've seen. We thank you for your provisions in this day, that everything that we need has been provided by you. So we praise you this day and we glorify your name. We thank you that we live, move, and we have our being in you. We are never separated, that nothing can separate us from your love. Thank you for the broadcast today. I thank you for the anointing of the Holy Spirit on the broadcast. I thank you that your word will go forth as a two-edged sword like a two-edged sword, hallelujah, dividing flesh from the spirit. I thank you that yokes will be broken, blinded eyes will be open, that bodies will be healed, minds will be healed. I thank you for restoration of anything that has been stolen by the enemy. I thank you for resurrection life. So have your way during this broadcast. Do what only you can do, Lord. We thank you that it is the truth that makes us free. So, Spirit of Truth, give us revelation knowledge. In Jesus' name, 
amen and amen. Hallelujah. In July, um, beginning on the 21st, I began a series on um, a series on the message until we hate the flesh. And I've done two um, episodes so far. Uh, The first one was geared more toward exposing what the flesh is, how it works against us. Uh, The second one uh, moved us toward um, laying down the life of the flesh, which is, is a dead work. And moving into love, because Jesus said that we would be known by our love for one another. So um, I gave you quite a bit of of, um, scriptural references. So I'm hoping that you'll go back to those messages, read those passages. In fact, read the, you should actually read the the scriptures surrounding uh, those messages. scripture references that I gave you just read the entire chapter to give fullness uh to the word um also um I want to encourage you to just continue to uh listen you know faith comes by hearing and hearing and hearing and hearing And the one thing that I do know that to break free of a pattern, uh, there has to be a constant repetition of the new to get rid of the old. Well, today's message is entitled, Glory to God, Stop Identifying with the Flesh. Know who you are. Stop identifying with the flesh. Know who you are. And I am saying this with the heart of a mother. Stop identifying with the flesh. That is not who you are. And I'm talking to all of you who have received Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. So this is part three of the series, Until We Hate the Flesh. And this segment of the message, the subtitle is Stop Identifying with the Flesh, Know Who You Are. In previous messages, we um, defined what the flesh was, that it was the carnal nature. It was the nature of man that acts apart from God. It's materialistic. It's unregenerate. Uh, it is. It has enmity with God, and it wars against our spirit. The Word of God tells us that no good thing dwells in the flesh, uh, it says that the flesh cannot obey God. Amen. Because first of all, the origin of the flesh is from the devil. Amen. The word, We talked about the works of the flesh. In Galatians 5, it, it outlines um, what the manifestations are of, of one that's operating in the flesh. It it, it listed envy and jealousy and anger and pride and de- divisiveness and fits of anger, selfishness, all of this stuff, all of that stuff. And I think we pretty much know what the works of the flesh are. And we've ha- heard enough teaching on the old man because these characteristics are characteristics of the old man. And the old man is dead. And what we are working on now is keeping him dead. Do not touch the unclean. Glory to God. So we are new creations. The scripture tells us that we are new creations, that old things have passed away. Now, the the process that we go through is that we still... Uh, have that habit pattern 
of the old man warring against us. So let's look at what what um, a habit is. A habit is a usual way of behaving, something a person does often in a regular and repeated way, the prevailing disposition or character of a person's thoughts and feelings, their mental makeup. So what we're left with is this way of thinking because prior to being saved um we did what was right in our in our own eyes we interpreted what was good and what was evil amen and we just did the best that we could because we were still children of that first Adam, born of the flesh. But once we gave our life to Christ, hallelujah, we were brought to life in the spirit. So that which was dead was brought to life. So now we are children of the Spirit. God is Spirit. And we are His children. Praise Him. Praise Him. The challenge is, now that we have begun in the Spirit, to stay in the Spirit. The church has come a long way. Um, In the beginning, um, in the old church, it was basically about biblical stories and to help people feel good about what they were going through in life. It was, um, you know, after going through hell all week and dealing with whatever personal challenges you had, you come to church, someone gives you um, um, an inspiring uh, word to just encourage you. But um, basically you were left uh, to working out your own salvation in terms of working it out through the flesh and not through the spirit. But as the the church began to evolve and to grow, uh, we began to teach more Christ-centered messages. Amen. We began to unlock biblical truths. Praise God, because it is the truth that makes us true and makes us free. And um, focusing on the truth that this journey that we on is a journey of faith. So we've had major breakthroughs uh, in the body of Christ. But we have still only touched like the tip of the spirit realm. There is so much more. Though we have seen supernatural healings, we've seen casting out of demons and even the dead being raised. But these are all the things that Jesus did during his ministry on the earth. But he said... That after going through the cross, the death, the burial, and the resurrection, he said that we would do even greater works because he is going to the Father. So let's get going. It's time to get going. It's time to uh, begin to uh, move, move under the anointing of the Holy Spirit. 
spirit and identify those things that are of the flesh. The, the flesh is very accomplished oriented. It likes to um, fulfill tasks and be able to say that I've done this, I've completed this, I've achieved this. But this life that we're speaking of is a life lived through Christ Jesus. Not through ourselves, but through Christ Jesus who now lives on the inside of us. And unfortunately, in this process of of the church growing, we still have not fully moved into the message of grace, the gospel, the good news. And so you still have um, a little bit of the law and uh, and 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 grace in operation. You have that mixture and the law is actually what is keeping that flesh alive because that law is demanding something from you and is actually demanding something that you aren't able to fulfill, which is why Christ came into the earth to fulfill all of the requirements of the law because man never could, but the law served its purpose in the earth because it revealed to man the great depravity um, uh, of our state that we were indeed ungodly, even though we tried to do good things and tried to be nice people, um, you know, quote and unquote, uh, being nice people. And, you know, and that can change, that definition can change from person to person. Amen. But what the law did, and even more so, when Jesus came back is is that it it was returned to its original purity which showed us that it wasn't just the physical acts but it was also the mental acts what we were thinking what we were thinking we were murdering people with our thoughts we were committing adultery with our thoughts, with our lustful thinking. Now it is very clear to us that it is impossible for us to fulfill the law. And if we start trying to fulfill the law, then we're subject to fulfilling all of it. So what we have begun in the spirit, let us seek to continue in the spirit, even though the flesh is going to war against us, but in recognizing when the flesh is in operation, you buffet your flesh Bring it into submission to the word of God. Amen. Uh, Let's go to Acts 20. Um, Here in this chapter, Paul is on his way to Jerusalem. And he is warning uh, the church because he's not certain that he'll see them again. He doesn't know what's going to happen now. Uh, once he returns to um, Jerusalem. So let's see. Let's start in verse 29. It says, he says, I know that after my departure, fierce wolves will come in among you, not sparing the flock. And from among your own selves will arise men speaking twisted things to draw away the disciples after themselves. Now, this is all the works of the flesh. It's a combination of the works of the flesh 
and then of course the work of the enemy these fierce wolves are definitely the work of the enemy verse 31 he says therefore be alert remembering that for three years i did not cease night or day to admonish everyone with tears and now i commend you to god and to the word of his grace which is able to build you up and to give you the inheritance among all those who are sanctified to give you the inheritance this grace this word of grace amen is able to build you up and give you an inheritance an inheritance is something that you do not have to work for glory to god that's what makes it and inheritance praise god praise god so the message of grace the word of grace this is the true gospel let's go to john 1 and i'm going to start reading in verse 9 yes verse 9 the true light which gives light to everyone, was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world was made through him. Yet the world did not know him. He came to his own, and his own people did not receive him. But to all who did receive him, who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. I'm going to read that verse again. But to all who did receive him, who believed in his name, which is who he is, the son of God. He gave the right to become children of God. He gave them the right to become children of God. It was something that was giving. It was a right that was given to them. As a result of their belief in him. Verse 13. Who were born. Talking about us. Who were born not of blood. Nor of the will of the flesh. Nor of the will of man. But of God. So we who are born again. We were born not of blood. Nor of the will of the flesh nor of the will of man, but of God. And God is spirit. We're born of the spirit. We are children of the spirit. Verse 14 says, And the word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we have seen his glory, glory as of the only Son from the Father, full of grace and truth. He was full of grace and truth. John bore witness about him and cried out, This was he of whom I said, He who comes after me ranks before me, because he was before me. For from his fullness we have all received grace upon grace. Glory to God. For the law was given through Moses, but grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. So Moses brought the law. Jesus Christ brought grace and truth. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. So our inheritance is that we are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. That as Jesus is, so are we in this world. We have been blessed 
with every spiritual blessing. He has given us everything that is needed, that is re, that is required for us to live in this natural life and to live godly lives. It is the power of God. The power of God. We were born of the Spirit and we are no longer subject to the flesh. The old man was crucified on the cross. I was crucified with Christ. I died with him and I was raised to life with him. Now we have to move into seeing ourselves as our Father sees us. He sees us as fully restored, like in the story of the 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 son that left the father's house. It, the story commonly known as the prodigal son, the son asking for his inheritance before the father dies, and he goes off and he squanders it. And when he comes to this place of lack and all his friends are gone and he's gone to the the lowest point that he could possibly go and he could go a little bit further if he were to eat the pig's food, but he decided to return home because he knew that even if he returned as a servant in his father's house that he would a second class citizen in other words that he would still be better off than the state that he was currently in but when he returned home and the father saw him from afar off before he even got close to him and the father ran to him And he clothed him in a robe, a royal robe. And that's how it is with us. We've been clothed with this robe of righteousness. And this ring has been placed on our finger, identifying us as his heir. Praise God. And he's celebrating over our lives. He's joy. He's joyful. And because we have accepted his son, we have believed that his son was the Messiah. That perfect lamb who took away the sins of the world. We believed on his name and received him in our hearts. And now we are born again. Our second birth, born of the spirit. If we stay in that place of the flesh, it will always be about performance instead of being who you are the scripture um i believe john uh, 15 speaks about um it compares us to being like branches in the in the vine and that as long as we are connected to the vine we are receiving all that we need we're not struggling to receive But we are abiding and resting and staying connected to him. And we are receiving everything that we need to produce fruit. And that is what this new life is about in Christ Jesus. No longer do we have to perform. No longer is there this demand, if you do this, then I will bless you. We've been made joint heirs with Christ Jesus. What is an heir? An heir 
according to the Webster Dictionary, it says a person who has the legal right to receive the property of someone who dies, one who inherits or is entitled to inherit property. Christ died for us. Christ died for us so that we may have eternal life. That we might have eternal life. Hallelujah. That we would be joint ears with him. All that he has, we have. I mean, that is entitlement. We've done nothing to discern, um, to deserve, glory to God, to deserve this. Nothing. Absolutely nothing. So if you've done nothing to receive this inheritance, why would you try now to do something to inherit? We've been given righteousness. That is who we are. We are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Glory to God. He is our righteousness. And so now we have an, a, 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 a heredity. We, our heredity came from that first Adam, which was of the flesh and all the things that came with the flesh. But now our heredity is a spiritual heredity. Now, in the natural, it says, the natural process by which physical and mental qualities are passed from a parent or a child. So, we who are spiritual can say, the spiritual process by which the spirit, the spiritual and mental qualities are passed from a parent or a child passed from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ glory to God hallelujah hallelujah glory to God glory to God so you are not the flesh so you have to stop identifying with the flesh it's just like with a child if a child believes that they are stupid they're going to underperform because that's what they believe about themselves. So whatever it is that they believe about themselves, it will drive their behavior. It will drive their thinking and their emotions. So we have to believe what the word of God is saying about us. That we are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. That as Jesus is, so are we in this world. That we are more than conquerors. That sin shall not have dominion over us. Because we are born of the Spirit. The old things have passed away. Because the body of sin has been crucified. That which held us captive no longer holds us captive. But if we stay behind the prison walls... And don't walk through the open door. We will not experience the freedom. It is the power of God. That dwells in us. That enables us. The Holy Spirit. The power of the Holy Spirit in us. In us. Let me see. The same power that raised Christ Jesus from the dead. Okay, let's go and look at Romans 11. 
11. And I'm going to read out of the English Standard Version. So let's go. Let's go. But I also want to read this out of the, the message as well. Because it's really, I, I love the way the the message is reading. It's, well, I'll, I'll, I'll read it. But let's, let's see. Mm. Uh, but if Christ... Is in you. I'm starting in verse 10. This is uh, chapter 8. But if Christ is in you. Although the body is dead because of sin. The spirit is life. Because of righteousness. If the spirit of him. Who raised Jesus from the dead. Dwells in you. And we know that he dwells in us. That spirit dwells in us because we've accepted Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. Well, that same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead is in me, in you. He who raised Christ Jesus Glory to God. From the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies. That's your physical body. Through his spirit who dwells in you. So by his stripes you were healed. And that power that has been released that you have received now that is on the inside of you guarantees the inheritance of divine health. Not just natural health, divine health flowing through your mortal bodies. God has given you a spirit of power. A spirit of power dwells in you. The power that causes you to triumph in every circumstance. And the more you embrace this truth, glory to God, the more you begin to express who you truly are. As a child of the Most High God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Father. We praise you. Now I want to read that scripture, that Romans 8. Starting, I'm going to start in verse 9, and I want to read it out of the Message Bible. I love this. It says, but if God himself has taken up residence in your life, you can hardly be thinking more of yourself than of him. Anyone, of course, who has not welcomed this invisible but clearly present God, the Spirit of Christ, won't know what we're talking about. But for you who welcome him, in whom he dwells, even though you still experience all the limitations of sin, you yourself experience life on God's terms. It stands to reason, doesn't it, that if the alive and present God who raised Jesus from the dead moves into your life, he'll do the same thing in you that he did in Jesus, bringing you alive to himself. When God lives and breathes in you, And he does, as surely as he did in Jesus, you are delivered from that dead life. With his spirit living in you, your body will be as alive as Christ's. Glory to God. Hallelujah. 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 Now that, that is the good news. 
thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I, you know, I thank God for this revelation that Paul had, um, you know, in the chapter before this Romans 8 chapter, you hear Paul sharing about this struggle that's going on because he has been translated into a new life and but he still has the memory of his old life he has the thought patterns that were was left of of that old life that he lived and it was warring against this new life that he had received and he was struggling he was waging war and trying to to figure out how am i going to be free of this thing Uh, let's see, where do I want to start? I'm going to go to Romans 7. He says, I'm going to start at 15. He says, for I do not understand my own actions. For I do not do. Wait a minute. Let me start over. 15, for I do not understand my own actions, for I do not do what I want, but I do the very thing I hate. Now, if I do what I do not want, I agree with the law that it is good. So now it is no longer I who do it, but sin that dwells within me. For I know that nothing good dwells in me that is in my flesh. For I have the desire to do what is right, but not the ability to carry it out. For I do not do the good I want, but the evil I do not want is what I keep on doing. Now, if I do what I do not want, it is no longer I. Who do it, but sin that dwells within me. So he's beginning to have this breakthrough that there is this law of sin and death in operation, glory to God, in his flesh. Because the flesh is still there. But now he's beginning to separate his true identity from that old man the residue which is the flesh because the body of sin has been destroyed so he's truly really no longer a prisoner but he's going through the process of discovering his freedom so let's go to 21 so i find it to be a law that when i want to do right evil lies close at hand for i delight in the law of god in my inner being but i see in my members another law waging war against the law of my mind the flesh and making me captive to the law of sin that dwells in my members wretched man that i am who will deliver me from this body of death then he as the final revelation, thanks be to God through Jesus Christ our Lord. So then I myself serve the law of God with my mind, but with my flesh I serve the law of sin. That's what the flesh does. It serves the law of sin. Okay. Let's go to verse 8, which is all part of the same letter. There is therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. For the law of the spirit of life has 
set you free in Christ Jesus from the law of sin and death. For God has done what the law, weakened by the flesh, could not do by sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh and for sin. He condemned sin in the flesh, that's in Jesus' body, in order that the righteous requirement of the law might be fulfilled in us, who walk not according to the flesh, but according to the spirit. And that according means to, um, it's a pattern, uh, practicing. It's a, it's a, it's a practice. Um, let's see. I think I looked up that word according at one point. Let's see if I can, I can find it. Wait a minute. I'm going to open up my dictionary. You know, because it, you know, it's important to us. Um, Okay, here we go. Here we go. That word according means to give consent, to be in agreement, to be consistent or in harmony with. So if you are walking in harmony and in agreement and consenting with the spirit, glory to God, hallelujah, 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 and not walking in agreement with the flesh, glory to God, hallelujah. Because you now know, this is what verse 6 says, for to set the mind on flesh is death. So now we know this. We know that for us to continue to agree with the thinking of the flesh, which is at war with God and at war with our spirit, which is who we are, that it is death. It's death to our peace, our joy, our confidence, our security in God. But to set our mind, to set it, To set our mind on the spirit is life. Setting your mind on God brings peace. For the mind that is set on the flesh is hostile to God, for it does not submit to God's law. Indeed, it cannot. It cannot. Those who are in the flesh cannot please God. You, I'm speaking to believers, you, however, you are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. If in fact the spirit of God dwells in you. That's a fact. The spirit of God dwells in you. Those who are born again. And you've been sealed by the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. So the punishment that was meant for us. You know, if you go back to Isaiah, it says he was bruised for our iniquities. He took it. He became a curse so that we would be free of the curse. Glory to God. This is the greatness of our inheritance. A divine exchange has taken place. He took our sin upon himself on the cross. And in exchange, he gave us his righteousness and made us joint heirs. It says God was in him, in Jesus, reconciling the world to himself. Glory to God. 
He is the way, the truth, and the life. No man can come to the Father except through the Son. Hallelujah. We thank you, Lord. Lord, we just thank you for your word today that it is a powerful word. Um, It's a healing word. It's a delivering word. It's a word that brings peace. It's a word of love. It expresses the greatness of your love for us that while we were yet enemies that you would send your son that you gave him to us so that through him we might have life and now we are seated in heavenly places with him in Christ Jesus and we thank you now Lord I'd like to speak to those who don't know you yet But they've been searching. And they've been hearing your voice. They just didn't know if it was real. But I thank you for making yourself real to them in this moment. The greatness of your love. The powerfulness of your forgiveness. That they will ask you to come into their hearts and be Lord of their lives. That they will receive the forgiveness of sins. I thank you, Lord, for making them righteous. That they are the righteousness of God through you. I thank you, Lord God, that the the yoke of bondage has been broken in their lives and they've been made free. Free to discover all that you have created them to be. And I thank you for this. In Christ Jesus' name, amen and amen, amen. Praise God, praise God, praise God for his word. Thank you for joining me again today. Hallelujah. It's just, it's, his word is so exciting. I was, you know, when I was going through the scriptures and just, you know, I would kind of lose myself in them and I would forget that I was preparing for a message because the word of God is just so good. And, you know, I'm on this journey with you. I may be... Uh, been given the opportunity to share the word of God through this broadcast, but I am on this journey with you. And these very things that I am teaching, I am learning. And it is through the repetition that it begins to sink deep down in me. And I begin to move confidently in who I am in Christ Jesus. So again, thank you for joining me. Thank you for listening. Uh, Also, um, I'd like to take a moment to encourage you to sow into this ministry. It's a nonprofit ministry, a 501c3. So anything that you will contribute will be tax deductible. Go out to our website, When Christians Speak, and click on the donation page. And whatever, whatever size gift, glory to God, God will bless it. And, and, and thank you. And I, I hope that you're being blessed by our broadcast. We try to have um, of the full range of this beautiful garden that uh, God has planted in the earth. We've had pastors and prophets and preachers and teachers and missionaries and uh, Christian in business and uh, writers, Christian authors and musicians and, reco- you know, those who are recording music and producers. I mean, glory to God. It is just beautiful um, when God begins to express himself 
through the gifts and talents that he has placed within us and to to bless the world and and to think that we have been blessed with the to be entrusted with the ministry of reconciliation that we have been given the opportunity to lead those to Christ to allow them to see the love of God being expressed in our lives so that they may know that that you are a real God and you are a loving God. You are a faithful God and that you've been wooing, wooing these people all of their lives and and we wake up at different parts of our lives but when we wake up to this glory is truth i mean what a glorious discovery it is but the journey doesn't stop there because we have to walk through the process of moving into this new creation of knowing who we are. So we thank you for the season that we're in. We thank you for this technology, Lord, that you've you've made available to us. It's great. It's wonderful. We can reach people all over the world, and it is such uh, a great time, even though in the midst of, of, of this great darkness that we see, we need not be afraid because light always dispels darkness. The Lord has told us that these times would come. But I believe the whole purpose that of, of what is happening right now in the earth, that it is shaking us up, is shaking up the church, shaking up the church. That we may wake up, that we no longer lie dormant in the earth. All creation is waiting for the manifestations of the sons of God. So he's maturing us. Through our trials and tribulations, we learn to allow it to have its perfect work so that we are patient and lacking in nothing. Praise God. So God bless you. Go forth into the rest of your day with joy, making melody, music in your hearts, and knowing that God is for you. So who can be against you? God bless you. listening to When Christians Speak Online Talk Radio, broadcasting out of the Washington, D.C. metropolitan area. Today's voice crying out in the wilderness, prepare ye the way of the Lord. When Christians Speak is dedicated to lifting up the name of Christ Jesus and spreading the good news.